Hello and welcome to this integration session. Kamen K does Quarkus Native. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through the one of the latest features that we introduced in Camel K that lets your uh, Camel application to be a uh, first class cloud native citizens. So being able to deploy uh, a typical uh, Camel, that is a Java application, as it was a, a cloud native application, reducing therefore uh, the um, footprint, your source footprint. So let's get it started. Um, first of all, some information about myself. I'm Pasquale Congiusti. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I joined a few years ago. And there you can find some of my, the social account I use. If you have any question about this presentation or in general, any uh, thing related to Camel K in particular or the uh, Camel Apache Camel ecosystem. I mainly work on Camel K and uh, also I contribute to Apache Camel, Camelets, and all the things that are uh, around uh, Camel K. Uh, I work into the Red Hat Integration product team, and uh, I used to contribute also to another open source project that is Synthesis, that is a, a low-code, no-code integration platform as a service that is also um, powered by uh, Apache Camel. This is the agenda of today. Uh, I'll start giving you a bit of context of uh, Camel K, what it is and how we can put it into the uh, uh, Apache Camel uh, sub-project context. Uh, then I will uh, walk you through the latest features that we have developed in Apache Camel K, with our Camelets, Kid Autoscalers, and Quarkus Native Bing build. Bing, this one, uh, the object of the demo. So in the demo, I'm going to uh, create uh, an integration and I'm going to show you how this integration uh, can leverage the Quarks native build and be a very reduced uh, uh, resource footprint of the uh, JVM one. And I'm taking the opportunity of this uh, uh, demo also to show some operational aspect, in particular monitoring. We'll see how we can uh, put some color to the metrics that we are uh, we can collect in Camel K uh, integrations. Apache Camel K ecosystem. So um, at the beginning you can see in the bullet point list the uh, tech stack that we use at Camel K. You, you see that there is Apache Camel, Camel Quarkus, Camel App Catalog, Quarkus and Java. Because after all, what uh, we inherit from the tech stack above basically is the, uh, the, the, the benefits of uh, the Camel framework. We know it's a Swiss Knife integration, so we can provide enterprise integration uh, patterns, components, uh, data formats, language, and a lot of other stuff. And from Camel Quark, that is the uh, runtime provider, we um, we inherit the developer joy, so you can quickly run uh, an application uh, uh, and make it uh, feel as a cloud native. What therefore, what we bring to the user, what we put on top of these uh, benefits that we already have, and I try to resume in three main uh, points that are at the bottom of the slide. Uh, first of all, we want to make it easy and fast to build, deploy, and run a Camel application on top of Kubernetes. So you may know that uh, typically it's, it's not straightforward to create a configuration and all the stuff needed uh, um, to, to have a running application on Kubernetes. And uh, with the CLI and uh, other tools that we have, uh, you, you will see that this is quite easy to, to do. Uh, the other point is about the fact that we want to be an enabling technology. In particular, we want to enable uh, the enterprise-driven architecture. And Camelets uh, really help us uh, going in that, uh, in that uh, to reach that goal. Um, and finally, also, we want to enable serverless. Uh, with the support of projects such as Knative and Kida, we are able to uh, provide a serverless experience on the integration that you are running. Let's go 
let's walk through the main features that we have developed in the last year. Uh, camelets, Kida support and Quarkus native build. So let's start with the camelets. Um, the camelets are were thought initially as a way to simplify um, the in a connector style approach the usage of uh, the camel components. Uh, as if you are a, an experienced camel developer you know that we have a lot of components more than 300 that is one of the most important thing of camel. Uh, most of the time um, those components may become complex because they have a lot of parameters. Uh, so what we thought is that by thinking on two uh, kind of personas, the camelet developer that is the connector developer and the camelet user that is the connector user, uh, you will be able to uh, to split this effort in, in, uh, in two ways. So the camelet developer will take care of uh, reducing that complexity and exposing something simpler to a final user that has n uh, not to necessarily deal with the low level details of a component. Uh, and the good thing is that these camelets, so these connectors, are not only used by camel K, but uh, in the last year we made a, a, an important effort to make this technology as uh, embedded in, uh, in uh, 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 plain camel. Uh, so we'll, you will be able to be used by any camel technology, so JBank, Kafka connector and so on. The second point that I put here is something that is important as well, in particular if we are thinking about design. So we can think that camelets are also a good way to design your system and to expose events of your system, uh, because one, one of the important things of camelets is that they declare the data type. So by declaring data type these two personas that are the, camel develop the camelet developer and the camelet user can easily understand what is a camelet about and then reuse uh, this as a sort of event source and event sync. Let's see this example here for instance. We can imagine that we have a camelet that was created that is a my ordering source that is uh, capturing some complex uh, scenario, some complex use case. So you can imagine a, a legacy system that is composed by different databases, processes and various things that uh, finally may expose uh, uh, an action, for instance an order created action and this is finally ending up into an event channel and there it's done. I mean from the event from the uh, event point of view we have created this event and then this information so this event can be created to do other stuff so we can think for instance a billing and then there, therefore a new camelet that can deal with uh, other legacy system that also has uh, several way to manage this so we can think that the camelet developer here and the camelet developer here is doing their duties and then there is some uh, application logic uh, developer that is doing something different, composing stuff. So once we have the events, we are basically managed to enable event-driven architecture because here we are talking about already about events and this is very useful in terms of design because once you have events you have decomposed those events in uh, the different things that are in your uh, enterprise then you can cre create new uh, use case on top of those basic events and I, I guess this is very powerful and very important. And uh, also reusability is the last point that is uh, linked with the probably with the first point once you have uh, uh, a catalog of connector of camlets you will be able to uh, reuse them uh, as, uh, as long as you need uh, during the um, application life cycle and the integration life cycle. So these are the benefits of the camelets. Let's go to the next point that is KIDA. Um, KIDA that means Kubernetes Event Driven Autoscalers and you see the Event Driven here is uh, really repeating uh, a lot. Uh, KIDA is a project that was, uh, was developed in order to extend the um, serverless beyond HTTP that is something that Knative 
uh, used to be. In fact, this uh, technology, well, this integration uh, with this technology is available since version 1.8 and uh, uh, it's based on what is called autoscaler on KIDA side that is a way to detect the events that are produced for instance on several sources Elasticsearch, Mongo, we'll see shortly the list and uh, basically allowed to scale to zero even and autoscale whenever there is no um, events occurring on a certain uh, um, a certain component. Uh, in fact, here you can see that the way we uh, we enable this technology is on camelet's binding by annotating the camelet binding and making sure that the camelet is uh, as unavailable uh, scalars, KIDA scalars. So here, for instance, the example that is two camelets binding doing something. We have an Elasticsearch source and a MongoDB sync. So whenever there is no traffic on the Elasticsearch, uh, automatically the, um, the KIDA will autoscale to zero the integration. And this is very powerful because we are going to spare a lot of resource when there is no uh, traffic, for instance, on a, a specific camelet. This is the list of supported scalers you can see uh, several of, uh, of the camelets also that we are already supported. Then the, there is a continuous effort also on KIDA uh, community to, uh, to extend this, uh, um, this set of uh, scalers. So basically once we have this, we, we managed to reach a sort of completion of uh, the serverless support in the sense that we not only uh, let the developers to, to use uh, scale to zero with Knative but also with, uh, with KIDA and also on, on components, not only on Knative endpoints, HTTP endpoints, but also on components. So now let's go to the main object of this talk that is Quarkus Native Build. Um, this feature is available already since a couple of versions. We are now in uh, 1.9, uh, almost 1.10, and it's available since version 1.7. And uh, it leverages something that is already uh, present on Quarkus, and this is the fact that uh, Quarkus, that is the runtime platform that we use, allows to compile natively uh, any Java application and reduce therefore its, uh, um, its uh, uh, time to start and its resource consumption to the minimum. Um, previously, we were using as a default behavior the JVM mode that was a lighter mode, let's say, where as you can see here, we, during the, the, the build, we used to uh, just reduce, um, analyze dependency and reduce the dependency tree just to the bare minimum needed for the uh, application to run. And this was already reducing quite a lot the, uh, uh, from the normal application. But with native, what we do is that we are also adding a compilation, a uh, native compilation, that will result in, a, uh, in no more interpretation in the middle. And in a, so the ahead of time compilation will provide um, uh, cloud native uh, uh, sorry, um, executable that is going to start uh, natively on uh, on the target machine. Um, so the nice, uh, the, the way the feature is going to be enabled uh, is through some uh, trait, it's Quarkus package type trait. Here you can uh, see how we will uh, um, include in the, mod, in the mod line, we'll see shortly in the demo. And the nice thing is that the feature that we have developed make it, make it uh, the startup of the application transparent in the sense that the, the application will start in JVM mode. In parallel, we will provide the native compilation. And uh, I forgot to say that a native compilation is taking some resource, uh, build time resource, because it's taking time to make all the optimization needed for the target machine. Uh, and 
So the, the JVM mode that was the default start as soon as possible. We'll see that start in seconds. Uh, as a, and as a few minutes after, uh, as soon as the uh, native compilation build has completed, there is a transparent rolling update that will upgrade the JVM with the native mode. We'll see in the demo how this is uh, behaving. So the final result is that we have a very reduced resource footprint and a startup. Uh, so within milliseconds the application will start and the memory consumption is going to be reduced to the, to the minimum. And this is giving your uh, application a, um, a very cloud-native feel, in the sense that we know that uh, historically cloud-native was not, I mean Java application and Camel is a Java application, was not very suitable uh, for uh, cloud native development uh, because it's uh, it's interpreted language so with this we really are reaching the point where also java can be considered as a good uh, language when uh, when we are talking about cloud native and we'll see with numbers uh, what it does mean in uh, during the demo some more thing to say before starting the demo is that the uh, native, the Camel K Quarkus native build is supported uh, in this moment in uh, with this uh, DSL, so on YAML, XML, and Camelets. There is some limitation on certain dependency on uh, um, on Java, but it's something that we are willing to solve as soon as possible. But for now, feel free to use the feature using these uh, uh, DSLs. So let's start with the demo. During the demo, what we are going to do is to show how a very simple uh, integration, a REST service backed by a PostgreSQL application, uh, and here you can find uh, um, the, the application if you want to try it yourself, uh, how this application is uh, uh, first starting in a JVM mode, how much memory takes, and later we will see the same application in the native mode and how memory takes, so we will compare uh, the, the difference between the two of them. So first of all, let's start by showing the... Oh, this is something for later. Let's, let's see the code. This is something that we don't need yet. Okay, um, so this is the uh, application. You see it's a uh, REST, uh, a series of REST endpoints. Um, uh, we want to expose customers, it's any, any arbitrary thing may work here and it's backed by a simple SQL query on a Postgres DB. Uh, you can see the queries, it's nothing fancy, so there are three endpoints just to insert and to select. Um, I've already prepared a data source with all the information here, I've already created a, a, a pod that is uh, um, working as a Postgres service, a database service. So um, this is something uh, we can immediately run. run my JVM. And uh, oh, let's see the dev mode better. So we can see the log immediately. So it's building. Okay, took a bit more than expected. Probably my it's a local machine environment, so it could be a bit uh, loaded. So, what we want to notice, but before that, let's uh, let's see if this uh, work. So I minikube service list. I'm on minikube, so I need to take the proxy of the uh, endpoint here. So I'm taking this one. And I just want to see, for instance, the customer's endpoint. I see I've already provided some demo and some data, and it's okay. So let's see the information here in the log that are interested in our discussion. First of all, let's focus on this log trace. And we see the Apache Camel context started in about half a second. It's not bad uh, for a cloud native application. Uh, but definitely it's not those few milliseconds that we'd like to be uh, um, 
12 factor compliance and also the trace from the Quarkus platform that tell us that the integration started on JVM mode in 4.5 seconds so this is already a, an, a value that we don't want to see here I mean probably in order to be really uh, cloud native compliant we should be under the second of start but still depending on the on the kind of application this is something that you may uh, you may have so let's do the same now but with the uh, Quarkus native build um, in theory I can include though that trade that I mentioned before here in this uh, same application but in order to have both application running at the same time and see the differences I created the very same uh, application here and I've annotated with those traits that we said so the Quarkus package type fast jar that is the JVM and the native one so I want both because um, I am telling the application that to try starting as soon as possible with the JVM, JVM mode and in parallel run the native build and as soon as the native build is done it will take over we'll see in in a second how this is working so let's go here let's open a new window I can use this one and I do camel run virus native minus that and we see it started so we see that the application is starting almost immediately and that is exactly because uh, that uh, JVM mode default start that we want to, to do. So as soon as you start using the um, running the application, you won't uh, have any delay. So it will start in JVM mode. In the while, and we can open a new tab, we can see what is happening. In the operator, we see that the operator has started building the uh, native image uh, with GraalVM. So this is going to take, depending on the dependency on the on the complexity of the integration, a few minutes. So it may span two, three, four, five minutes, and quite some results as well. In fact, if while this is running. Let's go back to the slides and let's see some figures that we uh, exported from other builds that we have run before. So you can see here the, uh, the stats related to the operator pod where the native build is running. So here you can see a peak of memory that can go quickly uh, up to the 5 gigabyte of memory. So this is something that we have to expect and you have to know your operator is going to be stressed with uh, in a in a peaks when the native build is starting because it's taking quite a lot of memory and also some CPU usage we see that here it go beyond the uh, single CPU um, needed as well as file system but this is uh, probably not very critical um, in the converse, the integration pod native, as soon as it has completed and started, it is consuming. This is, a, uh, I think, it was a REST, a simple REST application without database. So here it is consuming uh, a bit more than 20 megabytes, and it's quite linear the memory consumption. And the CPU usage is going around 0.5 millicores. Whilst the same integration pod in terms of memory is taking uh, all quite uh, I mean uh, 80 or 90 megabyte here and one millicores of a CPU so there are numbers that the, if you compared in a long um, in a long time running the, the, the integration application life cycle definitely may be convenient to have some peaks in the operator pod and then spare that memory along uh, the uh, life cycle of the application so let's see and go back to the um, logs to see if this is completed it's not so since this is pre-recorded I'm going to pause here and resume in a couple of minutes so it seems that 
it completed the build and in fact it's now building the integration kit and we may see exactly what is happening here the rolling upgrade so we see that the application automatically stopped the uh, JVM mode and started with the rolling upgrade the uh, native mode here this the, 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 the logs are interleaved and let's see the logs that are more interesting to us so this is the one that show how long it took for the camel uh, the Apache camel uh, context to start 9 millisecond quite a good improvement here and this is the application, the uh, log trace from the Quarkus application that tell us that it's a native build, so it already recognized that, and it started in 0 0.066 seconds, so uh, less than one millisecond, uh, I mean 60 milliseconds. Uh, so this is going even to be better in uh, uh, a real production system this is my local machine with all the limitation and but already it get the feeling of a, a first class cloud native application so this is really um, a real time critical application that start in millisecond but we didn't see what is uh, the let's open a new tab the resource consumption of both so well first of all let's see if it works as well service list so I will uh, run uh, the um, customer endpoint by the way the database is the same actually they are sharing the same database so I open uh, copy the link and I just be on the customer endpoint And I see that this is okay. And then I want to see which are the top pods, the memory consumption. So we can see here exactly what is the difference between the two of them. So we see here the CPU cores. At the moment, they are both idle, so they are not showing a big difference. But probably the native will be out, of course, used by, from the Red JVM. But the most remarking change is about the memory. So memory is under 34 uh, megabytes in the case of the rest uh, the JVM mode and 10 megabytes in the native mode so where we host uh, one JVM mode application we can host more than 10 native applications so we can see here the improvements is quite dramatic so you if you make the maths in a microservice oriented uh, architecture environment that has hundreds or even thousands of uh, different application uh, and uh, you can have a reduction of 90% of memory usage so really uh, a good improvement and really it make worth in this case to have the that peak of uh, um, memory consumption just at build time and uh, yeah it's a uh, it's a really good uh, impressive improvement so this is all what is related to the um, the Quarkus native application uh, feature. Um, so now let's go to the second part of the demo. Since we are already running some uh, uh, integration, let's go and see how we can monitor uh, the certain metrics that are available. And for that, what we can do, we can annotate with the uh, Camel K trait Prometheus enabled. So this is quite easy. I, I'm doing on both the so I can see the change on both. Since we have uh, the dev uh, um, flag enabled, you can see that as soon as I make the changes, this is uh, started immediately on both. And something nice that we want to see again is that. Again, the native build started the JVM mode and uh, it didn't start the native because the native required another build because in the previous integration kit that was created before, so the previous build was missing certain dependency, in particular Camel K, Camel micro profile metrics because Prometheus and, um, trait will enable the uh, micro profile metrics and will need these dependencies.
So while this is building, we can simply work and check uh, uh, how this is going on uh, um, on uh, on the JVM mode without any any kind of problem. So first of all, let's see uh, what it does mean. So clearing again and. I want to see again the service list because uh, the trade that we have just enabled is taking care to expose certain uh, just open certain uh, um, metrics that are coming from the micro profile. So if I go in Q metrics, I will see them, and uh, of course they are information, but they are not really easy to read so what we do is uh, to scrape this information with Prometheus so I have already Prometheus an op a Prometheus operator and Agrafan operator enabled on my machine that recognize this uh, the creation of this Prometheus profile on the integration for free so you have to do absolutely nothing and you can see them here if I go in graph sorry in status and targets I can see that the application, both application, although they are both still in JVM mode, uh, have been started to be scraped. So if I go here in the dashboard, I can see one of the prepared um, dashboard that I have that are already showing some graphs. So here we can see that the heap mem the memory heap is actually the same because actually also the native application is running in JVM mode. So we don't expect a, a very big change but something that we can do so for instance let's uh, remove this one and I want to show you how you can include others uh, others uh, um, metrics for instance what we are interested in uh, the error failure and the uh, transaction per second on, on this rest interface so in order to do that let's uh, let's uh, make some call on the JVM mode, for instance, in order to see something on the customers. And in the metrics, what I can see is that a new set of metrics created of just for this endpoint has been created. And for instance, I, I want to see the rate per second. So I go here, I go in the dashboard in Grafana, I add the panel and this is already linked to the Prometheus data source. This is quite easy to do and automatic to do. And I just push here the um, the kind of uh, um, of metrics that I want to see graphs. So I apply, and I see that this is starting getting this uh, this information. So let's uh, do something else. Let's see errors, for instance. Uh, something also nice to see so let me look for it you see it's not very easy to navigate through this so the failures on the uh, well it's okay on the exchange this one or let's see if we have on the very same no it's okay let's let's go from here um, I go here again and I create another panel so I will have the TPS the transaction per second and the number of errors and this one may be used for for you to monitor the um, the status of a, an, an application so here I put this and I call this like this way okay so I see that this is reporting zero because there was no uh, no no error and of course we see in this case that this is reporting the information based on the context and the, on the route we have several routes because we have several um, several um, route um, defined here you can see the different fronts are the one that are um, driving uh, this this uh, configuration so if i go here for instance and I do a, a, an empty post I should have an error and I should see that error reflected on my okay so 500 and I should see within a, a few seconds 
this should be scraped it may take a while but in the while while it uh, wait for the scraping let's do um, um, stress test in order to see that other one to raise so I'm using Apache bench that is a very nice tool and I'm just putting my, my uh, thousand of requests in order to put a bit of stress on my on my endpoint and on my integration and this is in general can be very useful as a immediate a quick way to to test your uh, and to stress test your application so the Apache Bench is a really great tool so um, it has different configurations. So you, we see that this is started, start doing things and making call. It gives you also some uh, good metrics as well. And on the graph, we should see shortly that this is getting uh, a rise, a peak of um, transaction per second. So right now, in this very same moment, start with 14, probably it's going a bit higher. And also we see that error that we previously had. So you see here. So this is getting high. Let's see if it maintain uh, quite stable. Probably it will going to decrease uh, in a few in a few seconds. So I guess that it's all what I have. Let's go again here in the slide show just to see. Yeah, it was the last slide, and uh, yeah, it, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, of course, feel free to reach out to me with any question about this presentation or any feature on Camel and Camel K. And uh, thank again and uh, have a, um, a good um, night, evening, morning, depending on where you are listening for. <laughs> Bye.